Mission Specialist Jeff Hoffman. It really changes your, your relationship with planet Earth. T-minus two minutes and counting. And we have liftoff. I'm looking out the window and I realize on the other side of that window is an environment where I would be dead in 15 seconds. It was my very first flight. Throttle step down to 90%. It's, uh... We weren't planning to do a spacewalk, but they always would train two astronauts on how to use spacesuits just in case something happened. And sure enough, one of the satellites we launched from the shuttle didn't turn on, and so they sent us out to fix it. Messrs. Hoffman and Griggs had only been through general training on Earth, never intending to leave the shuttle in space. That's Jeff putting on a lower torso assembly. It uh, rather cumbersome task to get yourself suited up. You you have this gut feeling which which you never get. Check free drift. We do most of our training underwater. And um, I remember going out of the airlock and I sort of floated over towards the toolbox to get all the tools and put it on my tool carrier so that I could. And all that time I was sort of facing down and looking at the floor of the, the cargo bay of the shuttle. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, you know, this really feels like when I was in the water, that was great training. You know? Now, with their bulky gloves, they wrestled with the makeshift fly swats, cut from the plastic covers of a flight manual. They attached three varieties of the swatter to the end of the robot arm. Tomorrow, Discovery will fly close to the tumbling dormant satellite in an attempt to brush the ignition switch with the fly swat and so trigger 80 million pounds worth of hardware into life. I turned around to move to my next workplace and then I was looking up and there was the earth and the sky and the sun and, and it hit me, wow, you know, I'm not in the water tank anymore, I'm in space. We noticed one thing at 128 miles that the earth appears to move much more quickly past you than it does at any higher altitude. Now you actually see some of the environmental damage that, that humanity has done to our planet and it's visible from a cosmic perspective. We see all the, the patterns of deforestation in, in long geometrical uh, lines. It's not like we're learning anything new by looking at the Earth from a distance, and yet it, it affects us. And uh, we come on down through uh, Central America. And so a spectacular view of a, a pass over the Red Sea. When you actually are up there and you look back and you perceive the Earth as a planet, meaning it's a finite system. It's, you know, scientifically we call it a closed system. Uh, no closed system can tolerate exponential growth over a long time. And humanity is now gonna have to deal with that. Hello, Jeff. So, Jeff, you're going to have your hands full. You might want to go ahead and put your helmet lights on. Did I do? I'm going to hold 
to this end, you can hit that, just come right up easy, just like you're going. Tom, just want to let you know that uh, Jerry Ross and the rest of us send our congratulations to you for uh, now being the record holder for the most EVA time in the shuttle program. Debra Houston, some good news for you. We had a good aliveness test. Oh, great. All right. Outstanding. The hope, I think, that most astronauts come back with is that you know, we, we try to spread this word. You know, we're living in a finite planet and we better darn take care of it because we're all crewmates in a finite environment. Hard message to get across with all the social and economic problems we have to deal with, but at the very fundamental basis, the, the long-term survival of humanity depends on, on changing our perception of what it means to live on a finite planet. Thank you.